All right, so I've taken a lot of time away from this channel to post any content whatsoever. So what I thought I'd do is coming up here on year five, living in Los Angeles as a Jersey boy, um, I would make a follow-up video to one of my last videos, which was year one in Los Angeles. So I've taken a lot of time away from this channel from posting anything or really creating any content to focus on the reason why I'm here in Los Angeles to be a freelance filmmaker to eventually one day be a director make films and do that whole thing just like many of you watching this video. So um, as a way to get back into making content for this channel I figured I'd make a nice little reunion video as I just passed my five year mark here lo living in Los Angeles and talk about my experience and how things have been, right? So who am I, just to give you some context and everything. Uh, my name's Sean Boyd, I'm a director and cinematographer. I've shot a lot of what I would call more medium budget projects, um, you know, music videos, uh, small branded pieces, commercials, and I've directed a 45 minute length narrative uh, film, which I did uh, over the past two years and a couple other shorts and things like that. So it's just to give you a little bit of a backstory as to where this opinion is coming from. And you don't have to take my opinion uh, to the bank as total truth. This is just my experience of my time here. So let's get into it. I think the number one thing that comes up and is prevalent when talking about Los Angeles as a filmmaker is the competition, right? Uh, if you throw a rock at the wall, you will find a director, a cinematographer, another kid with a big dream in their heart to come out here and work in the film and entertainment industry and, you know, pay the bills with that and make that their entire life and their identity and, you know, pursue their life's passion, right? I'm one of those people and there are so many other people. And I think that's a great part about being here because you will find so many like-minded individuals all trying to do the same thing. However, at the same time, that also creates quite a lot of uh, market saturation and quite a lot of competition when it comes to getting gigs. I would definitely say over the past few years, if you're applying to a job, you know, on a Facebook group or um, any other groups or, or there's an open bid somehow and you've come into play, the competition is so aggressive, I think, to such a point where if sometimes your bid is off by $50 or this guy's willing to come with his Teradek plus his camera uh, for free or this guy's willing to work an extra day or do something, you know, you're out. That's it. You're done. Um, and then if you don't answer your phone, let's say you're out with your girl, you're cooking some food, you're having dinner, you're taking some you time because you work a lot of hours um, and you don't answer your phone or respond. That's it. You're done. You're shot. You lost the job and they'll get somebody else because you can easily be replaced. So that's one of the, the sad parts that I would say that I really don't enjoy about freelancing out here. But that's not to say that you can't have a successful career. That's not to say that you can't do well I think once you find a good click of people and crew uh, whether it's directors first AC producers whoever you know that you're networked in with um, you know you kind of have that grandfathered in you know priority list of who's gonna hit you up and who's not uh, just as I think it is in any market share and any other business, you know, people are going to work with who they like at the end of the day. Uh, but I would say that that is still a very prevalent thing and something to keep in mind here, you know, while freelancing out here. The other thing I want to talk about is the logistics and the logistics of filming out here are fucking nauseating. And what I mean by that is there are so many hoops that you have to jump through when you want to shoot in Los Angeles, right? If you want to do a short film with a couple of your buddies and um, just like I was, and I was shooting this crime drama for quite a while, anywhere and everywhere that you can possibly think of, you need a permit, you need insurance, you need all of these things. And I get that there is a system in place to make sure that people are not, you know, abusing um, what they're doing and doing dangerous things to get bystanders hurt or blocking roadways or doing anything of that. But the problem is, is in Los Angeles, there's a one size uh, fits all kind of glove when it comes to doing productions here. So when you want to apply for permits, you will be treated the same as a five person crew as Paramount with five 18 wheelers with, you know, crafty tents and, you know, 
20 ton G and E packages and generators and pyrotechnics and the whole nine. So the cost, the logistics, the wait time, the permits and the going back and forth is just, it's just, it makes passion and, and, and wanting to, you know, actually create your own passion projects extremely difficult. It's not impossible, but you, you, you feel like you gotta be this grand criminal to pull off anything that's a passion project and just kind of steal the shot, if you will. Whereas I would really speak, uh, on behalf of a lot of people here and say that, you know, if I went back home to New Jersey or if I went to any other market share, um, or when I was shooting in New York, you know, a year ago, it's like, I feel like what we do has this cool factor and we're met with open arms versus here. It's such a massive business entity and everybody, whether it's government or a person, you know, waiting to rent you their space on peer space is just waiting there with their hand out, you know, seeing how they can get a dollar from you to do something. And I get it when you're doing big commercials, I get it when you're doing big movies and there's tons of money, but from a purely passionate standpoint of view to make short films, spec films, you know, artistic pieces, whatever have you, uh, the logistics of navigating that are just absolutely fucking atrocious. And it's something that I really can't stand at this point, uh, anymore. Um, also when talking about logistics at the same time, I will say it is very easy to get gear here. And that goes back to that competition and that saturation, um, with the logistics of, of gear, it's like you could be somewhere at three o'clock at night and a Teradek cable goes out and there's a guy up the street on share grid or somebody that somebody knows on set who's got that cable. Whereas if you were shooting maybe a lot of other places in the country, it's not going to happen. Or, you know, the, the red goes down and you got to take it to red in Hollywood or you're the Ari has an issue and you got to take it to Ari in Burbank. You know, there's that support and there is all of that here, which is, which is really awesome. So there's, there's positives and negatives to everything for sure. Now, the next thing I want to touch on, um, you know, in my experience freelancing out here is the friendships and the crew members that you will meet. Now, there's one thing that I have heard at all my life before coming out to LA. And I think a lot of the rest of the world has heard is that LA is a very plastic place. It is a very fake and thin and, um, smoke and mirrors kind of place where people will try to make the perception of themselves seem a certain way. And a lot of people are out just for what you can offer them. And I would say that that analysis is, can be true and that can be true anywhere at all. It's not just synonymous to here. And I've had a lot of, uh, great friendships with other, um, passionate filmmakers as well. And unfortunately a lot of them, you know, just didn't work out and that's, that's life at the end of the day. Um, but unfortunately, I find that that is a very popular thing and it's it's like at a point where you're you, you feel like you're at this place that's all stars and glamour and sun and uh, you know you think it should be such a happy place but at times I feel like it can be um, a very lonely uh, very fake place where it's all smiles for the benefit of what we do at the end of the day and I don't want to leave it all negative because at the same time you will find those people and and I, I put it this way, how somebody else did before, that haven't caught in that L.A. zombie bite yet. And um, even people that I am no longer friends with, uh, regardless, I will still say, you know, they were some great people in my life. And what I want to say here is no matter where you are, whether it's Los Angeles or anywhere else, um, there are great people who are willing to do immeasurable kind things for you that you barely know in the film space. I think a lot of artists and people, um, you know, have an extreme level of emotional intelligence and there are people who have done and, and said and gone to the end of the world and back for me that I personally don't think that I deserve that level of kindness from. So at the same time, you know, I can't look at one side of something, you know, without the other, you know, where there's light, there's dark at the same time. And that couldn't be more true. So I would say just the biggest thing is, you know, unfortunately, this is a very uh, fake place. This is a place that, you know, thrives off of the highlights of life, the glamour of life, the, um, 
the moments that we all cheer for in the Instagram reels, the moments that we all want and the moments that we all depict in our mind as the epitome of success, as that place that we want to get to, and then I'll be happy. You know, that's what this place thrives off of, but it is not always that, right? Um, but at the same time, so damn thankful for all of those people. So I just really wanted to mention that. And one of the other, uh, you know, sections about being a freelancer out here that I really want to talk about, which is what everybody wants to know about, is the finances, right? Um, I would say there's there's quite a few things. The number one thing, you know, for especially freelancing out here, is that sunshine tax. It's, it's a real thing, and uh, if you want to live in Los Angeles, unfortunately, it's not exactly the cheapest place to live, nor is any major city in, in the U.S. or the world for that matter, but um, a one-bedroom apartment is going to run you at least around averaging 2200 to live in a somewhat decent area don't expect it to be the nicest place in the world uh your gas is probably about four dollars and fifty cents and you will drive a lot living here um you're gonna have to go quite far for quite a lot of shoots and sit in a damn bit of traffic so expect that um but with that being said your earning potential is definitely um you know has the possibility for high and it definitely has the possibility for low um everything at the end of the day is um how do i put this I, I have i have like two dual opinions on this right i think a lot of it is due to your work ethic your your uh, connections and that you know kind of priority list that we we're talking about before so if you're on a priority list and you're in the know with you know the right people they're going to continue to hire you they're going to continue to call back and you will have phenomenal months however at the same time there are also things that are you know sometimes out of our control and then that's when it all goes to our mind and we think oh man you know it's my fault. I must suck at this. I must not know what I'm doing. So you can definitely have uh, low months out here as well. I mean, just to give you some instance, um, me, you know, not a union uh, cinematographer, not assigned to an agency cinematographer, not doing anything that's really ever six, seven figure budgets, just small branded uh, things, uh, medium budget music videos with some record labels and some smaller narrative short films and things like that. I would say your earning potential monthly would be on average anywhere from five uh, to 15,000 was probably the best month that I have ever had. Now that doesn't happen all the time, but my, my um, preference on this is, is just saying that it can range, you know, the more that you're in the know with the right people, you're going to be in a better spot. But sometimes there are outside circumstances where you may not have a great month. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've unfortunately had a year, year and a half the past, uh, um, area where that being in the know with the right people has definitely uh, diminished and I can put some of that blame on myself but I think some of that also goes along with being you know that lonely place I was talking about that place where you know you want to connect with people you want to see the best in them and you want to work with them but also you want to be friends with them and sometimes that duality might not work out so much um, but hey <laughs> If you if you're into in it to win it, it's it's definitely possible. Um, some things that I definitely want to just preface on as well while we have this video is that man, I mean, doing this at the end of the day for a living, working in film, um, whatever your position is, nobody put a gun to your head. Nobody uh, told you and forced you to do this career. I'm going to be honest with you. It's fucking hard. It's it's really, really hard when you have um, goals in your personal life, whether you're married or you have kids or as you get older, you know, circumstances in your life change or you want to go see your family back at home. There's a lot of of sacrifices that come along with the inconsistency, the sometimes uncertain times, the odd hours of working, the tiredness, the fatigue, the emotional uh, weight, the mental weight, and the burden of carrying it all, right? But at the end of the day, nobody forced you to do this. It's such a weird business that we work in because, you know, if you were to tell me tomorrow that I wouldn't be able to do this anymore, it would... 
it would break my heart. But at the same time, when you do this job, it breaks your heart. Um, it's, it's, it's like the toxic girlfriend that you just can't get rid of at the same time. But, um, I have loved so many moments and experiences working, you know, all around the country and sometimes other countries as well, doing what I do and creating and pushing myself to that next level of artists that I believe that I can be. And, you know, also at the same time, I've torn myself down as a man and I've been places mentally where I think, fuck it, you know, what does this all amount to? And shit, I'm going through a little bit of that right now, you know, five years deep, um, right here in a rut right now. And one of the biggest things that I have been telling myself lately is, you know what? <clears throat> I'm in a place where I've sold off probably 70% of my gear. I've lost a lot of the clientele that I used to have and a lot of the jobs that I've used to have um, as the city's in a little bit of a different state right now, unfortunately, with productions lowering. And a lot has changed, but regardless of that, no one can ever take the God-given talent that I have. Nobody can ever take the passion that I feel in my heart. Nobody can ever take the the eye, the the you know what I mean? That just special area in your mind where it's like you for those moments when you press record and you look at the back of the monitor you're on set and you've just crafted one of the most beautiful images, you just feel like, like dude, I'm I'm the greatest fucking thing in the world, you know? And uh that feeling is something that I would hope that I can get back to more and more and more, but I don't know. That's that's my five years here. I hope uh, that's a little bit straightforward and also just coming at it real and just telling you, you know, where my life is and where I am. And I hope somebody out there watching this is the version of me, you know, five years ago, ecstatic with enthusiasm, looking to pursue their film career and looking to um, climb the ladder and, you know, be the best version of an artist that they can be no matter what the capacity is. And uh, I'm going to keep working on me. I'm going to keep on. Um, working on some content for this channel and everything, but uh, that's all I got to say.